This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. That's right. It is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. I'm riding solo this evening. Of course, Chris is uh, is handling some business, but he will be back for the Thursday and Friday shows on today's show. We are discussing which unranked team in this year's AP Top 25 college football poll could end up ranked in the top 10 at the end of the season. Uh, If you want to go back to yesterday's show, we talked about which top 10 team could end up unranked. Uh, It has has happened multiple years now. Uh, We'll start off with Chris Felica's tweet from just a couple of days ago. In 25 of the last 26 years, 2011 being the exception, At least one team that was not in the preseason top 25 finished in the top 10. Last year, there were two. That was Florida and Washington State. Wazoo was the ninth team in the last six years that did not receive a single point in the preseason poll and finished in the top 10. So we know that this kind of stuff is likely. Uh, So let's go ahead and run through the AP top 25, and then we'll talk about the others receiving votes, those that did not get votes, We'll talk about who my favorite candidates are, etc. But first, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six absolutely incredible sports books. You can find more information on all of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can also find out more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, hit subscribe, leave some comments, leave nice reviews, Jump in there. We appreciate hearing everything from you guys. We always thank you for the support. Let's jump in. The AP Top 25. Number one, Clemson. Number two, Alabama. Three, Georgia. Four, Oklahoma. Five, Ohio State. Six, LSU. Seven, Michigan. Eight, Florida. Nine, Notre Dame. Ten, Texas. Then we get into the non-top ten. Number 11, Oregon. 12, Texas A&M. 13, Washington 14, Utah, 15, Penn State, 16, Auburn, 17, UCF, Central Florida, number 18, Michigan State, 19, Wisconsin, 20, Iowa, 21, Iowa State, 22, Syracuse, number 23, Washington State, number 24, Nebraska, number 25, Stanford. And we're not going to talk about any of these. We're going to talk about the teams that were left out that could end up in the top 10 this season. Here are your unranked teams. You've got Missouri at 26, Army at 27, Mississippi State 28, Miami at 29, 30, Northwestern, 31, TCU, 32, Virginia, 33, Boise State, 34, Cincy, 35, South Carolina, 36, Virginia Tech, 37, Fresno State, 38, Utah State, 39, Minnesota, 40, Memphis, 41, Appalachian State, 42, West Virginia, 43, Oklahoma State, 44, Arizona State, 45, Arizona, and 46, USC, the University of Southern California. Now, of those teams, I have got six teams here that I think could end up being in the top 10. And I'll give you my favorite for who that's going to be going forward. Uh, First off, Missouri. Missouri could absolutely end up in the top 10. Uh, They've got Kelly Bryant this year as a grad transfer. Depending on what Barry Odom's defense does, they looked really, really good last year. This is a good team with an easy schedule, and they and the fan base are rallying around this NCAA bowl ban that has come out that they are uh, actually fighting right now. And we'll see what happens with that probably middle of the season. If they end up getting to go to a bowl, good deal. Um, let me go on and talk about Missouri's schedule because that's that's where this gets interesting. Uh, they should be favored, really, in their first seven games. And they're not all easy. Any of them could be uh, slip-ups, right? Any of them could be a slip-up candidate. But uh, let's talk about... There we go. All right, so they open with Wyoming. So then that's at Wyoming. Then they've got... Uh, West Virginia coming to Columbia, Southeast Missouri, South Carolina, Troy, Ole Miss, and then they go to Vanderbilt. So they've only got two road games in the first seven games. 
that's pretty impressive. And the road games are actually at Wyoming and at Vanderbilt. South Carolina's a little tricky. Troy can be tricky if you don't take them seriously. West Virginia, of course, new coach, new quarterback, basically entire new team. Uh, Wyoming could be tough in Laramie. We'll see. Uh, Ole Miss, of course, never easy. And then, of course, after Vanderbilt, you've got at Kentucky, which could be tough. At Georgia, which is going to be tough. you got Florida coming to Columbia. You've got Tennessee coming to Columbia. And you play at Arkansas. That's a reasonable schedule. They could be 8-0 or 7-0 uh, before they ever play a team with a pulse, really. And that's and it's all semi-respectable names. That's the funny part. So Missouri absolutely could end up in the top 10. Army. Army could end up in the top 10. And the only thing that they really have to do is win at the big house on September the 7th. You go in, you beat Michigan. Listen to the rest of this. They play Rice at UT San Antonio, Morgan State, Tulane at Western Kentucky, at Georgia State, San Jose State, at Air Force, UMass, VMI, a bye week before playing at Hawaii in the Navy. If you can beat Michigan, you can finish the season undefeated. And of course, we all know that the pollsters and and basically everybody loves Army. So that is absolutely uh, a candidate if they can beat Michigan. If they don't beat Michigan, nobody takes them seriously the rest of the year because then they start to pay attention to the schedule. Next up, Miami. The Miami Hurricanes, uh, look, quarterback Jaron Williams, if he can provide that offense any kind of a pulse, if Manny Diaz's defense stays tough, this schedule sets up brilliantly. Even with a loss early to Florida, the rest of the schedule sets up for them to possibly be 10-2. and two. If they win the opening game, you could be looking at an 11-1 year. Now, it could be a little bit fraudulent because you know that they're nowhere near Clemson, but that would still get them into the top 10. Uh, Northwestern, and I know that this is a weird candidate, but if Hunter Johnson is legit and that offensive line improves, which they absolutely could, uh, the reports out of camp are that the offensive line looks better than it has in years, I trust Pat Fitzgerald in close ball games. I trust his defense. I trust this team to go on the road. If they've got their offense actually clicking, they could absolutely get in there. Oklahoma State, new offensive coordinator Sean Gleason from Princeton. Uh, he did some really innovative and fun things. You know Oklahoma State is going to put up points. Uh, if they can outscore their competition, then you know things are going to go well. Don't forget, they've got former Duke defensive coordinator Jim Knowles, and he likes to blitz. He likes to play aggressive. Uh, year one didn't look all that great. Could they improve in year two once they know the defense a little better? Absolutely. USC is the sixth candidate from the ones that are receiving votes. They've got the seventh most blue chip talent in the country. Could Graham Harrell come in and work a miracle with JT Daniels? Absolutely. They've got playmakers all over the field. The line lacks a little bit of depth on both sides. But when you got talent and you've got a coach that has won before, you know, if JT Daniels proves to be better than he was, I mean, last year he was still supposed to be in high school. So if he matures, gets better at decision making, I could absolutely see it. Now, it's a really difficult schedule, but that just means that there's more options and more opportunities for them to get big wins. Now, let's move on to the teams that got no votes in the top 25 that could possibly make a run at a top 10 finish. Uh, these are the teams that just kind of stand out that got zero votes. Tennessee, Florida State, Kentucky, Baylor, BYU, Texas Tech, and then Purdue and UCLA at the end, I don't foresee them jumping in there. But those were two teams that, I mean, could they make a top 25? Possibly, but their schedules are both really difficult, and they lose. Uh, Purdue loses a lot. UCLA still in year two of the rebuild mode under Chip Kelly. So we're, we're going to leave them out for this. Tennessee, offensive coordinator Jim Chaney was hired in. Could he work some miracles with Garantano? Garantano, however you say it. 
excuse me, Tennessee fans. Uh, is Pruitt more of a Kirby Smart kind of coach, or is he more like all of the other Saban assistants that have failed at their previous jobs? Uh, it sounds out of camp like Pruitt has hit on a ton of his uh, first two recruiting classes. That's good. They already had some talent on campus. Uh, the schedule sets up pretty nice this year. Could they sneak out a couple of upsets? Nine and three would maybe get them a top 10 finish the same way it did Florida last year. Next up, Florida State. Willie Taggart always improves in year two. Everywhere he has gone, he has more than, and it's only two other places that he's actually been for two years, Western Kentucky and South Florida. But everywhere he's gone, he has more than doubled the win total in year two. Just saying. If he doubles this one, that means 10 wins. Now, I don't see that, but could it happen with Kendall Bryles at offensive coordinator? Absolutely. They have the fifth most blue chip talent in the country. I mean, they've, they've got more talent than Clemson does. Now, do they develop it as well? Probably not, but obviously still early in the Taggart era. We'll see, but the schedule is easy enough. They've got more talent than anybody on their schedule. You never know. You never know. Next, Kentucky. Uh, let me ask you this question. What if Mark Stoops, what if his system is what made Josh Allen and Benny Snell and not the other way around? What if his development is what made these guys? Could you see not necessarily a repeat of 10 and 2, but 9 and 3? Uh, well, they went 10 and 3 last year, but could they go 9 and 3 again? I mean, it's, it's possible. It's right there. Uh, it's all about player development, as you have seen from Clemson and a, a number of other teams around the country. Is that what Mark Stoops is doing at Kentucky? They went 10-3 and three last year and didn't even receive a vote in the AP poll. That's pretty crazy. Um, Baylor. Matt Rule always has tough teams. He has got some absolute athletes uh, at the playmaker positions, right? At all the skill positions, they look like Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, they need a little more depth on their lines, on the offensive line and the defensive line, but they got playmakers. They got studs everywhere. Baylor, I think, will make some noise this year. I, they didn't get a single vote. I think they could end up in the top 20, in the top 15 even. After that, the last two, Texas Tech, Matt Wells comes into town. Uh, how well is he going to mesh with Cliff Kingsbury's bunch? They've got talent. Alan Bowman, the quarterback, is an absolute phenom. So you know you've got good things to work with. Remember, Matt Wells and his staff went 11-1 and at Utah State and were this close. To, I, I take that back. They were ten and two. They went and won the bowl game, um, but they were this close to being eleven and one in the regular season by beating Michigan State in East Lansing. So, is it possible that he could go to Texas Tech and completely reform that team and get them believing in themselves, teach them how to win? Absolutely. Finally, last one: BYU um, quarterback Zach Wilson. I get that's they they kind of turned a corner last year. Zach Wilson was phenomenal. Uh, they call him I forget who it was. Somebody on Banner Society, uh, I think Richard Johnson, was calling him the Mormon Manziel, and he is some kind of fun to watch. So, could he find a way to get some good wins? Absolutely. Now I think their schedule is really really difficult, but they've got grown men playing uh, in the trenches for them. I mean, I remember at BYU, they've got a lot of 25, 26, 27, 28-year-old guys that are that are men. And, you know, they do have to play USC and Washington and et cetera, et cetera, Tennessee, it, all, the, all of these different teams. But you get enough of those wins, you play a hard enough schedule, you finish 9-3, and three, you get the right win at the right time, upset the correct team, yeah, you could absolutely finish in the top 10. So my favorites to actually get into the top 10. I'm going to go with Miami. So I like the Hurricanes. I think if they get just a just any kind of a pulse on offense, they are going to be really, really good, and that schedule sets up brilliantly for them. So I will take Miami. And then of the teams that are receiving 
no votes. Zero votes in the AP Top 25. I'm actually going to go with Florida State. Kendall Bryles has completely rejuvenated offenses everywhere that he has gone. I don't know that he'll be able to rejuvenate this offensive line, but they do have new blood in there. There could be some better chemistry, and that's what they're working on right now. I think Florida State and Miami have the two best shots to go uh, 10-2, and 9-3, and three, somewhere around there to get into the top 10. All right, that's going to wrap up today's show. We appreciate you rolling in. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think is right, what you think is wrong, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to ask us some questions, uh, we're going to start doing a Q&A session on the show uh, every other week. I believe No, I'm sorry, every week starting after week one, which is after the Labor Day weekend. You can submit those to winningcureseverything at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter. That's probably the easiest one. Uh, send it over to at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, or at Winning Cures. As always, go to winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Uh, leave a nice review, a five-star written review. We will, uh, If we get some good ones, we're going to read them on the show, obviously. But we do appreciate your support. Share the show out for us. We love you guys. We will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.